Most of us have a favourite comic book character, whether it's Superman in his buffed out spandex glory, or the Amazonian princess and ultra gay icon Wonder Woman, but it's Charlie Brown and the kids from the Peanuts comic series that have been thrust into their angst driven teenage years and onto the stage in the Toronto debut of the off Broadway play Dog Sees God. And with opening night scheduled to start in just a couple of minutes time, let's head inside and check it out. Comedic yet moving, Dog Sees God follows CB, who, after the death of his beloved pet, tries to find meaning in life with some help from a few of his high school friends. Oh shit, you guys are wasted! What do you mean by a better place? Um, I, I don't know, like, doggy heaven or something. You really believe that? Oh no! Not a chicken! I was just saying it to be polite. However, it's CB's relationship with school outcast Beethoven that raises a few eyebrows and sets tempers flaring among the ranks. I think you must have missed the fine print at the bottom of the invitation that said no queers. I'm sorry I had to come all this way, buddy, but you're going to have to turn around and follow the breadcrumbs back to that little house. Dude, chill. There's nothing wrong with them being here. We're having a good time. And while the show deals with a lot of pretty heavy issues, it's CB's horny stoner friend Van who provides many of the lighter moments of the night. Former Fab cover model and Degrassi alumni Adamo Ruggiero says he was actually surprised to be offered the role. You know what, it was actually weird because when I, I read the script and my agent was like going for this audition and I assumed, you know, maybe foolishly and or ignorantly that I would go in for Beethoven, which was the gay character, but they asked me to go in for Van. And so I, I just, you know what, I just sat in my room that night and I just tried to find kind of, you know, that alter ego in me where I could be the straightest stoner man alive. <laughs> and it was actually really fun and my roommate thought I was crazy sleeping next door but like <laughs> I was really searching for it and I thought you know they'll either laugh at me at the audition in a good way or laugh in a bad way and I think they laughed in a good way and now it's almost like starting a new job you know when you start the job you're like how am I gonna get used to this and that's the same thing with the character eventually you do get used to it and it becomes routine and now I feel so comfortable playing him um, and it's actually weird when I stop playing him I get out into like my regular world <laughs> and like I I don't know what to do should I wear my bow tie <laughs> I'm confused. Straight so. guys can wear bow ties. It can work. They can. I'm 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 stereotyping. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think you might be equally upset by <laughs> you giving his best friend a blowjob. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I've never done it before. How do I do it? Here, I'll teach you. <laughs> <laughs> How is it for you observing the struggles of Beethoven's character? I felt really proud of Ben because this is a message that I believe in, you know, spreading awareness to the LGBT youth and especially to their friends and families who, you know, are trying to learn and accept and understand the LGBT community. For him to be out there playing that character, totally honored. And for me to sit back and not have to worry about being on yeah. camera but actually hear the story, yeah. you know, without worrying about you know, everything that comes with being an actor on camera. I, I, I really learned a lot about myself. I really did. But Van was the comic relief of the, of the show, so... Yeah, I had to be funny. And how, how, <laughs> how did you prepare for that? The comedy really comes out of just the character that you're preparing. And, you know, if you ask for the laugh, usually the audience is dead. But once you just stay true to exactly where you're going with whatever monologue that you're doing or whatever moment that you're in, it almost becomes like the laughs are just like a product or a byproduct ultimately of what you're trying to do, which is just to put this character on stage. So I actually didn't worry about being funny. It was a pleasant surprise when people found me funny. <laughs> That's it's good. It's nice to f it's nice to feel funny, right? Yeah, it is nice to feel funny. And then it's also not so nice when there's a key joke and no one laughed at it, and then you're angry in your head. But that's the beauty of live theater. You know, you get different people and you hear their immediate response. Exactly. Well, the show's a great success, and um, obviously the fact that it's been extended for a couple of weeks such a through to the 18th, thing. which I'm glad about because I think by the time this hits the web, um, I hope people, people get to come and see it. it. So you've got yeah. to come along. So it's a great show. Well done on the show. Thank and, you very uh, much. All the best. With Thank everything you else. so much. Thank you for your support. No worries. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. The Toronto season of Dog Sees God has been extended through to April 18, so for more information and to get tickets to the show, head over to www.dogseesgod.ca. And of course, the latest Fab magazine is on stands now, featuring a wrap-up of Toronto Fashion Week, as well as a look inside the world of Toronto designer John Walk's label, Superstein. For Fab TV, I'm Ryan. Thanks for watching.